easier on students when they want to go and watch certain parts of the video. You don't have to go through the whole video. Okay, so that was for loop. Before I forget, let me make a commit for this one. So I'll say uh, for loop. And I can commit it. And just remember, commit just saves it to my local com local code space. I want to send it on to GitHub. Then, oops, not pull. I have to do push, right? So pull, pull means bring whatever changes are out there in here. I don't have any changes. And then push means send the changes from code space to GitHub. Okay. So that was for loop. And now we have a loop that's not supported in Python. It's it's the do while loop. So let's go here. So do while loop. So we go here. So I was saying that the while loop, the, the while loop uh, has some condition, right? So it may run zero or n times, right? Because if this condition is false initially, then this code will never run. That's while loop. The do while loop is syntax is like this. So we have do, and then it's code block. After the code block executes, then we have while, and then we check some condition or some Boolean expression. And then it requires a semicolon. So that can be a tripping issue for some students. We might forget, right? So please remember. So how does this one work? Code executes at least one to n times. So it will always execute at least one time. So if this is false, then it's one time. So if that's on a quiz question, just remember, while loop can execute 0 to n times, or at least uh, may never execute, and do while at least one time or more. It will always execute at least one time. So it's a post uh, condition check, right? So first run code and then check. So let's see how uh, this works in an example. So we go here. And uh, let's do sum of squares, right? We're going to beat that one to death. <laughs> Let me see here. So uh, int sum of squares squares with do and we bring in some number go to the implementation file file that is just already there we go here remove semicolon open close curly brace and uh, we need sum equals zero and let's not forget to return it so we return it in here, we can tackle that uh, problem. So we can say, okay, do tab. It'll like kind of do the code filling for us. And uh, we have some. Okay, so we have some. And then we need like some counter, right? So i equals zero. So while i less than equal sum, and we want to do sum equals sum plus i times i, or for short we can do sum plus equal, right, i times i. So that's the same thing. But notice the condition 
is checked afterward. So first some code block executes and then the condition is checked for us. So it kind of works like the while loop but inverted, right? I guess that's how we can look at it. Questions here? And we definitely need a, we need we need a way to make this false, right? So we need a way to make this guy false. So uh, i plus plus, which is the same as i equal i plus one, or i plus equal one, but we opt for i plus plus, whatever value i has, incremented by one. That's what we're saying. Questions here? <clears throat> okay, let's jump to test case. Let's go here, uh, test case. Test sum of squares. Do while. require that some it's not going to know what we're talking about right we have to remember to include do while now it it'll find their code uh control space sum of squares do and then we have value three equal 14 and let me find the executable right here. Uh, run in terminal. Okay, fail. Let me see if I did. Uh, Okay, uh, 14, 0, 14. Okay, let's go and look at our code here. So sum plus equal. Return 0. Okay, so let me see here. Sum is 0 i is 0, sum plus equal i times i, oh, this is wrong where right? I should be none, I missed it, okay, so let's run it again, run in terminal. Okay, so we go down here, up arrow, space, dash s, enter. And now we have the correct answer. And we'll go ahead and add the two other assertions to make sure that we're okay. So require with four, that should equal 30. And require five that should equal fifty five. Run in terminal. And we're green, which is good. Questions here on um, while do while usage. If we forget uh, that semicolon, our code will not work. So this one is required. 
Questions? Okay, so no questions. Let's move on to another example. Same uh, using the do files. Let's see here. Uh, jump here. I'm still kind of confused on what do does, right? So it's just an inverted while loop, right? So let me bring up the while loop here. So the while loop, if we see the syntax here, while some condition. Afterward, it check it uh, executes the code. So if this is false here, this will never execute. So it's it can execute zero or more times. If we jump back to do while, notice we have the syntax do. So meaning do. this piece here first. We're not checking any conditions or anything. So you do it one time. Afterward, we're like, while this condition is true, then come back and execute again. So this one, do while, will execute at least one time or more times, right? One or more times. So it's the opposite of the while loop. I hope that clears it up. Okay, so let's move on to another example. And let's just do the same one we did, right? So we just did void display some numbers. So we do display numbers. Again, this one, no test case. Go to do while. Go here. Okay, and we want to display numbers. So we can say uh, do tab, and then we're like uh, see out something, right? And then we need some condition. Okay, so let's <coughs> say auto i equals zero. So we're going to work with integers. So see out i plus one, and then we do new line character. So that's going to execute one time regardless. And then we set up the condition. So it, will it execute a second time or not? Well, the condition will let, will determine that. So we can say i less than no. And this one should be i plus one. So let me go to do while include io stream. So up here, Include IO stream. And then up here, let me remember to help with namespace resolution. So we go using C out, start C out. Now this piece is okay. So I just need to remember to help or to eventually make this condition false, I need to modify the value of I, right? So I'm like, okay, I plus plus. Again, if you missed it the first time, that's the same as saying i equals i plus 1. And the same as saying i plus equal 1. But in C++, we always opt for the unary incrementer i plus plus. We're not returning values, so we can just jump to do while main so we go to the do while main let's make sure we remember to include do while why do we have to do that that's going to help c++ find our code and then here we're like display numbers and we'll go with value 5 
and let's try to run it. So we go here and run in terminal. Okay, uh, multiple definite. Oh, actually, this is one that I wanted to. Let me see. Uh, 1527. Let me. Four. Uh, four. Uh, Fifteen. Thirty. Multiple definition of a function. That's the one I was trying to replicate on Tuesday, and I couldn't. So let me see. Display numbers. Okay, so I know what happened here. So here, uh, we need to distinguish it, right? So we say display numbers uh, do and then over here we have display numbers do and I'm pretty sure if we look at display numbers under while it'll be display numbers so that's what I was complaining about so we go here uh, or was it in no it wasn't there okay uh, where was it um, four or oh, four okay four go here display numbers right so I was saying that I had display numbers defined twice so when I when I try to run it in my uh, let me see here let me make sure uh, yeah so I have to make sure that I changed the name at least one time, right? So I think I addressed that. So I went to do while. I did do here, and then I have to do do here too. So if I run it, then there shouldn't be any conflict. So let me run it. 15 to 17 minutes, because I'll cut off that video and I'll add it to the other video. To 17 minutes, okay. And then in main, obviously, I have to make sure that I say do here. Display numbers with do. And then I can run it. Run in terminal. So even though they're on completely different files, right? Like I'm trying to use them in the test case, and the test case can't determine. Like It's like, hey, wait a minute. Like there's two display numbers which one are you talking about once in four and once in in the do while file so that that's what was happening there questions here the do file Okay, and we had a string too, so we might as well do that one too. So we go here and we're like, okay, include string, and then we're like, uh, void display string with do namespace resolution stud string string. Okay, so I have it. Let me go to do while cpp implementation file, and here we'll just iterate the string using a do while. We've done it with while, we've done it with for, now we'll do it with do while. So do tab, do tab, well now it's not liking me, tab. Okay, well this is weird. Okay, so I'll do that. I didn't get the intelligence help. So while some condition, let me not forget the semicolon there. Okay, so I need an indexer. So I'll say auto i, equals zero again that makes it a whole number or integer then i say equal i less than the string dot size then i better remember to increment i so i say i plus plus and then here i say see out what 
str add index i new line character let me remove this extra l that i put here okay and that's how we can iterate a string using the do while loop and there's no test case we just have to go to main and use it right so oops, not python display string with do and then we need string string language equals python ah. and then we can use lang here and let's run that piece run in terminal And we have the output Python, right? So we did it with while for and with do while. Questions here so far? Any questions? Okay, so I'm not hearing anything, so I guess there's there's no questions. Okay, so let's go do another example using do while. And usually like in legacy programs, legacy meaning like old school programs, the do while was used to control program flow. Like if they would display a menu, then they would uh they would uh, use a do while loop to control what was going on. So what we'll do here is we'll create this function prompt user. So let's see here. Um, go here and we'll say uh, prompt user. So void prompt user no parameters. Okay, with no parameters. Okay. And then here we write the code for that piece. So write code for prompt user that loops until user opts not to continue, right? So we're gonna have to ask the user for some input. So we can say do, oh, can't get it to do the intelligence anymore, I'm not sure why. While, open close parentheses, semicolon. And then we need to ask the user for some input and then we need to capture some input meaning we need using stud c in here character input so using stud character input or c in we come here and we're like okay so what do we do here so we need um auto choice and we'll say uh yes right So here we'll say while choice equals lowercase choice or uppercase choice, keep on looping. But in here we have to ask the user, right? So enter and to exit or something like that. Actually enter uh, y to and y to continue, right? Y to continue character input and then we modify choice we get it from the keyboard and then we check it let me put a semicolon there so you don't like the way it looks here let me do one space there oops not there here okay so we're just going to ask the user like enter n to exit y to continue actually anything other than n will exit right so but it's okay we won't worry about that for this example let's go to main and say prompt user so
prompt user and let's run that piece run in terminal okay uh, let's see why to continue continue with lowercase y uppercase y continue uh and we'll exit. Actually, anything other than Y will exit, right? But that's okay. So that's how we can begin using a do while loop. We could use a while loop too for this, right? But usually the while loop lends itself to this because we want we want something to execute at least once. And like for a mini program, we could do that. Let me jump back over here and show you that. So we were like, okay. Uh, run name menu with no parameters okay so void run menu with no parameters okay no parameters okay we go to do file and then we can do some cout statements like one would be like uh like i don't know like accounts Table backslash n maybe two would be accounts receivable very accounts and then we'll just do three to x three whatever three something else no matter okay backslash n okay so if we're running like some program in a command uh, prompt window this is how we could approach it so then here we could go here and then we say run menu so run the menu right run the menu display the menu and then the user would pick some options here we're not asking them to pick some options but you could do that right so let's see how this piece would work running terminal okay so notice like this would be like some menu that the user would see and in a in like a more elaborate program, we could like say like if they enter one, two, or three, then do something, right? Here we're just asking them like why to continue. It'll display the menu again and to exit, and then the program exits, right? So uh, questions here. This one might be uh, like payroll or something. And then exit for four would be maybe like exit. We're not we're not handling that piece yet, but we can like we can add another uh, function here that helps us handle the menu. How can we do that? Like if we want to ask user for input, like we display the menu, but then we want to ask users for for input. Like we're like, what what do we do if they enter value one? value 2, value 3, or value 4. Like in, in a command prompt, like if they chose 1, then it will show them the accounts receivable window or the accounts pay, I mean the accounts payable window, and then they could like pay like the utility bill for this month or whatever, right? And if it's receivables, then we would uh, be accepting payments. And we'd go to the customer's account and we'd give them credit for an invoice that they paid or something like that. This is payable, right? A question so far? Okay, so we would have to write like another function handle menu option. So if they 
type in something then we could handle it and maybe we could use like a switch statement num and then we'd have a uh, case one case two case three case four and the default Obviously, I have to change this to value 2, value 3, value 4. I'm not going to display a page, right? We can just simply say uh, see out, uh, maybe like uh, we would display uh, AP page. We're not, we're not going to go that far. We would do that, and then if they chose two, we would do display accounts receivable page. And if they did this, then we would say display payroll page. So there's going to be some assignments that ask you to create a menu. So you can use this as a guide, or you can roll out your own menu. Uh, exit. exit or if they provide some different value then we can say invalid option right invalid option so right here uh, we would ask them enter option or something right enter option and then character input we need to capture that option that variable variable does not exist so we have to make sure we create it option equals negative one maybe and after they Uh, do that then we can say handle menu option right and we pass in the menu option this is a very basic example of how you could attack a menu right uh, create a menu roll out a menu and let's see how this would work so we go to main uh, we do not have to change anything all the logic for our menu exists in the dot h and the cpp right so notice how our main is very small which is what you'll always see out there in the industry the main is going to be very small all the logic happens in other files. So let's see here. Uh, go here, uh, run in terminal. Okay, let me see here. Uh, it was not declared. Okay, again, I missed it in the CPP, right? So I think that's what happened. Let me see. Uh, handle menu option. Yeah, so I need to put the header file, right? Because I was. I skip that piece, so I have to go here and handle menu option. It should be there. And let me try to run it. Run in terminal. Okay, so notice down here, let me make this window bigger. We have the menu. And then like the user, would, we would ask the user, like enter an option, like say they, they did option one, right? And then we would tell them like uh, display AP page and they would be taken to another page and that's where they could do some work. And obviously that page would eventually need to have input to exit. We're not doing that piece. Then here we go back to like enter and to continue to exit or why to continue. So I want to continue. It displays the menu again. And then I go like to uh, accounts payable. I mean accounts receivable. 
it will say like you uh, display AR page. Yes, I just want to continue. Uh, exit. Like I chose to exit, and maybe here I would ask him like, do you really want to exit? But I'm not doing that piece, right? So then I say, and here in the program will exit. So very simple example of how you can use loops to create a menu in your program to create some interface for homework assignments. Questions here? Okay, so let me stop this piece here and then I'll start another video. So that was it for Do While, just introductions to Do While.